<laughs> You'll watch it on YouTube. Yeah. Okay. Here's the part that everybody's all excited about. The final exam information. This is a four, this is a three slide slideshow. But I just didn't want to forget anything important, so this year I actually did a slideshow for it. Normally I came in here with a piece of paper. Okay. The exam the theory exam. So you guys are aware that this is a split exam for this course. As in, the exam's in two pieces. There's a practical portion and a theory portion. I am one of the first teachers here to actually have a practical portion for database. Historically, it's been a 40% written exam. So this exam was used to be worth 40% of your final grade and if you were in CST 8282, it was a 225 question exam for three hours. If you're in 8215, you had a 90 question exam for an hour and a half. You know, I just don't believe in paper exams. However, they have their place. So what's happened now is I brought in a few years ago the concept of a split exam. The practical side gets rid of you proving you know SQL. The theory side proves to me you know the terminology and the verbiage. This information is for the theory exam. It is August 12th at 1 p.m. For those of you that don't know about a.m. p.m., it's at 1,300 hours. That covers everybody who's not Canadian. <laughs> this is when all the, for all the exchange students are going, and the foreign exchange students or the you know, distance education students are going, ha, 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 I know what he's talking about. Canadians are dumb. Um, it's in room T102. If you look at your access, It'll show in T102A, T0102B, T102C. Have you actually seen T102? It's just one big frickin' room with dividers. Apparently, they, they can be broken down into three rooms, but it's going to be wide open. It's one room. You come in, you sit wherever the heck you want. It is going to be proctored by myself and Howard. Howard's going to be my partner in crime. He'll be keeping an eye on you guys. He used to cover my labs years ago, so he might actually be able to explain, answer some of the questions. Uh, he's got eyes of a hawk. <laughs> Just saying. Um, he has caught someone cheating during one of my exams in the past. So I would have missed it completely. He didn't. I don't know how he caught them, but it was great. Yes? We, 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 we walk laps. We take, we walk up and down between the aisles just to keep an eye on things. I'll usually stand at the front, he'll stand at the back, and then every once in a while we'll swap places by taking a different row just so we can, you know, keep people on their toes. Yes, it's two hours. It is closed book. It's made up of a combination of the stuff of historically questions from 81, 8215, and I miswrote it. Does it say 8215? It does. And 8282. 8282 used to be the course that the CP students had before 8215. There are certain concepts that they, students out of CP, let me rephrase that. It's questions that are specific for CP students because it's the material you guys needed to be taught to be able to succeed in the whatever next database course. Um, the 8215 is my questions and you'll definitely be able to tell the difference between them. Um, there's 85 questions. It's a short exam. Why? Uh, because I looked at the last couple of exams that we ran and sometimes the same question was repeated three times with slightly different wording. I've decided it was a waste of oxygen and paper. Uh, oxygen as in you're burning, lo you're burning lots of oxygen while you're trying to figure out the answer to the same question for the third time. Either you know it or you don't. I'm not a big believer in repeating the same thing twice or with a slightly different word when it comes to testing. It's true, false, and multiple choice. There's only one correct answer per question. That means there's no A and C, you know, circle A and circle C. If there's a possibility of it being A and C, there'll be an option for A and C. Um, it's a Scantron sheet. Yay! I know how much everybody loves them. Uh, bring three or four sharpened pencils, or bring two pencils and a sharpener. Mechanical pencils tend to break really easily when doing Scantron, and I've had students run out of lead. 
Um, and bring a really good eraser. Scantron's bitchy. Uh, for those of you that don't know what I mean, and I didn't know how bad it was because he rejected my answer sheet once. You know how you got circles like this? Right? And you go, oh, I'm sure the answer is A. Then you go and review and you go, oh, no, no. no it's really D. And then you erase A. But you know how it never really erases? Scantron reads this way. And if it decides that this is circled, it stops reading the rest. Which means this is the answer it's going to accept. I will have extra Scantron sheets with me, so if one of you actually really pooches it, you can restart your exam, restart filling in your exam. Um, so Scantron be bitchy, careful with that. So my recommendation usually is circle it light, like fill it in lightly and then go back and harden it in again. Or even better, circle all your answers on the exam and when you're really, really sure, transcribe them. It's probably the, the fastest way. Um, and since it's 85 questions, you should also be really careful that you actually answer 85 questions. I've had students in the past where they're answering this question, this question, they skip the question, then they answer the next question, but they weren't paying attention, so they moved it up by one. And a student that was coming in with a 90 ended up with a 12 on the exam, 12% on their exam. And I had to hand grade the whole exam off their Scantron sheet. So it doesn't go well. And, you know, there was actually a fluke that they actually they had correct answers mixed in the rest because, you know, it just so happened to, be, to move around the right way. Make sure you answer all 85 questions. If you get to the end of the Scantron sheet, and you're at 84, but you've answered 85 questions, you've got problems. All right, that's the theory exam. The practical exam. It will be done in lab. Uh, I've been told that I'm used to make my exam, my practical exam too hard. I'll be releasing the diagram, the actual database, a week before the exam. In other words, next week. I'll be releasing to you the diagram and the backup of the database. I used to not give it to you before the exam. You had to restore it during the exam and learn to understand it during the exam, the structure of the database. I was told that wasn't very fair. I thought it was really fair, but you know. Um, so I'm releasing the diagram and the database. Please restore it next week in lab or, you know, at least try to restore it before lab next week. So if you have any problems, you're not going to suffer during the practical exam with, oh, I don't know, Mac users, Postgres won't start. That's not a good scene. Windows users, my database is gone. And for those of you that say, well, what the heck happened there? I've seen that already three times this term. Make sure everything is working before the exam the practical exam. Obviously there's a lecture before the practical exam. Um, I use that as my, what I call my value added lecture where I don't cover any new gradable material. I just cover material um, of some sort. Attendance will be taken. It's the only time I'll take attendance in lab. So please come to your lab. If you did not sign the sheet, it's an automatic zero. Why? Because, as you all know, I don't know most of your names. I've memorized these four people. And I don't know why, but I got these four people and those three ladies. And him, and him, and maybe him. <laughs> right? I just suck at names. It just so happens to know sometimes I'll pick up certain names that I remember. And I don't know why, but it's just they stick. So. Although I know your face, I don't always know your name. And I know your name because I can't pronounce your real name. <laughs> so I know your anglicized name. But I'm just saying, it's... <laughs> don't, don't be embarrassed, I'm just saying. <laughs> um, but that's because I know your face, but I don't necessarily know your name attached to your face. You could say, I was in class 
but you weren't. And you could have been sitting down the hall working on the practical exam at the same time as with three other people and having a conversation amongst each other on how to resolve the answers. It's not a perfect system that I take your attendance, but at least I know you were in the room and I tell you to shut the hell up. And I can also hear the keystrokes and I can tell when people are chattering this. And if I see a cell phone come out, I got a new cell phone. My daughter hates hers. Just warning you now. No cell phones, please. Because you could be sitting there doing this and asking somebody across the room what the answer is to whatever question. It's the same format as you've experienced. It's an hour 50 minutes long. In other words, it starts at the start of lab sharp, ends 10 minutes early, before the end of the lab. Why? So you guys can get out of the way for the next batch of people to come in. It's 10 questions. They're coming out of random pools. There's three easy questions. There's six medium questions. I've actually been told some of my medium questions are easier than my easy questions. I just thought they were a little harder. And then there's one challenging question coming out of a pool. And what is the difference between, why is there one particularly challenging question? Anybody want to take a guess why I include one hard question? No. <laughs> nice though, nice try. No, the purpose of a hard question is to differentiate between the students that excelled at the material and the ones that were pretty good at the material and then the ones that, you know, I'll be seeing again next term. Right? So, actually so far it's actually going pretty well. I won't see a lot of you, if any of you, next term according to what my grade book shows. Yes. Yeah, you'll see me in the halls. <laughs> um, but, you know, so there's three easy questions. They're fairly easy. They're typical, you know, how many of this are there? Bang, done. The moderate ones usually involve a join. The challenging one involves joining pretty much everything. That means you understand the structure of the database. You understand the diagram. You understand what the data looks like in the database, which probably means you uploaded the database before you took time to look inside what was in the database and you took time to actually understand the diagram of how things are connected. Yes? Uh, yeah, theoretically, yes, depending how you decide to answer the question and which ones you get. Some I've had cases where one person got a particularly easy version of the exam and then the person next to them got like the hardest thing on earth. Uh, this exam has been arranged so it's not likely for that to happen. But the previous version of the practical exam, which is what I gave to you guys, is the practice. Some of you may experience, if you did it more than once, sometimes it's really easy and sometimes it's really not easy. This one's fairly even across the board. I allow clarification questions, as in, what do you mean by this? If you ask me, how do I join these two tables, I'm going to look at you and, go, <laughs> and walk away. Right? Because by then you should know how to do a join. You should understand how a where clause works, I hope. And you should know what the columns are, where things are connected, because it's all interconnected. Now, a little bit more information about this. This data you're working with is real world data. It is actually, I'll tell you what's in it. It's, an, it's an actually a flights database. And by flights database, I actually connected online to uh, open flight, which is a website where you can actually look at historical flights from around the world. What airline with what airplane went from what destination to what destination? Uh, what altitude each airport is at? What the distance is for a given trip? It's all in there and it's all real data. So I took the time to download the database, dump all the data, and reload it in a structure you guys would understand with the proper naming conventions because the naming conventions were crap. So it's been completely renamed, foreign keys are all there, and all the questions work. How do I know? Because I actually wrote the question, I wrote the SQL, found the answer, then wrote a question. Uh, they're fairly clear. I've had a few questions that weren't clear and those have been fixed over the years. Okay. Sure. 
You're sitting at your computer. I'm not going to sit there and stand over behind Anna and go, stop talking to him. <laughs> I don't care. It's going to be, it's open, it's, it's coding. I mean, I sit at work and I've got, you've got documentation open up on one of my monitors. You know, I've got code here, a demo window there, and then code there, be, references here, because, you know, I don't remember everything. Yeah, I know. That's okay. Um, yes? Yeah. No, it is an actual... It's actual questions. Oh, look. There it is. <laughs> if I stand back really, really far... You can see this is exactly what the exam looks like. I don't. Yeah, I know somebody's going to pull out their camera, right? That's exactly what the exam looks like. I'm moving it really, really fast. Yeah, nice try. Hey. Actually, this doesn't mean this is the final version of the exam, but that's roughly what it looks like. It's essentially, if you understand the concepts, you should be doing fine. Um, they're not specific to this hybrids. They're not specific to the textbook. They're not specific to the slideshow. It's basically if you've been able to gel the concepts you've learned. Yeah, there's some questions that are kind of specific, you know. If given this kind of data, what data type would you use? A trigger can be used for this. You know, um, Insert, you know, there's, there's an example, a chunk of an SQL statement says, what is this piece doing in this SQL statement? Those kinds of questions. If you understand the concepts, you should do fine. <laughs> yeah. So it's if you go through the slideshows and review the material for the hybrids, you'll do fine. Realistically, that's pretty much what I'd say. As of next week, no. I technically, as of this week, no. This is the last class where there's content for the exam. How's that for a statement? It's all queries. It's just like the practice and assignment two, part two. Yeah, it's exactly like that. Okay, you can't modify your data. Okay. Yes. No, nope. one point per question. Ten questions. Each question is worth ten percent. Instantly. So I'll be sitting there, and I'll suddenly people will go, "Oh," and that's too bad <laughs> at that point. No, 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 no. No, it's just SQL. It's just like assignment two, part two, and the practice the practical. In the theory side, there might be. On the practical? No, the practical is all select. The, the theory covers the other stuff. Like, what is a primary key for? Hey? Eh? Just on the theory. What are indexes? No, God, no. Why? How can I? Exactly. It's whether or not you can retrieve data and understand what the question means. Which is, realistically, 90% of database work is that. Okay. So the review is June 1st, which is next Tuesday. So I'm going to run a 15-minute review. Just give me a minute and I'll get to you. Ah, oh, damn it. <laughs> Anyways, August 1st. Okay? I was working on like no coffee, like no coffee when I did this. Um, and the database for the practical will also be August 1st. I don't know why I put in June. August 1st. 